The people of Brazil eat, sleep and breathe football. You're in the heart of it right now. Do you remember that time the Australian national team played the Brazilian national team in a rundown favela in Rio de Janeiro? Yeah, that's how I remember it as well. Cahill and the boys lit up a side with 64 rated Kaka. Ugh, a simpler time. FIBA Street is obviously a knockoff NBA Ballers, which is obviously a knockoff NBA Street, which is obviously a knockoff FIFA 98 Arena Mode, which is a obvious knockoff of NBA Jam, which is obviously knockoff Pac-Man, which is obviously knockoff Dr. Mario, which is obviously a knockoff of Mario Strikers on the GameCube. No, but, but seriously, what do you remember about this game? I remember personally, and keep in mind, I was a small child when I first played this game. I remember it was super fun, super fast paced. What I failed to remember, however, was what a bullshit slugfest this was. If I'm being perfectly honest with you guys, the atmosphere, the music, the commentator, the player models are what really brought this game to life. Without them, this game is a solid 5 out of 10, and if I struck out with every other game in the club around closing time, I might consider bringing this game home. Are you still talking about video games, Nelly, or is there something you want to get off your chest? No, shut up. Honestly though, you can just turn this game on and leave it running in the background just for the fire music. And I feel like I'm getting like a plus 20 culture bonus just for listening to this. See, me being the big dick massive alpha that I am, when I came back to this game, I set it on super hard, and then I regretted it almost immediately. <laughs> See, the beauty of this game on super hard difficulty is that it will give you the illusion that you are a worthy adversary for the AI until you start winning. Then the game will go full hedge fund mode on Wall Street and start breaking rules that they set out because they're losing. They start doing shit like this where they basically ignore what you're doing and then they just score every time they shoot, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. This whole game is built on pulling off these insane skill moves and your opponent putting on a theatrical performance in awe of your greatness. But once the computer no longer wants to play this game, quite literally, it's gonna be over for you. You're fucked. It's like playing Civil War roleplay and one of you has the real bullets. So maybe from all of this so far, you think that maybe I don't like this game, or I think it's not good, and that's actually false. I think this game is very solid, especially for its time. It knew exactly what it was and what it wasn't. So for starters, this game is very simple. Skill moves are easy to pull off, which makes it very enjoyable for anyone that picks it up. Shooting basically requires zero input, change my mind. Goalkeeping is essentially a dice roll, and defending is like trying to catch a fish out of water with your bare hands. So you just have to slide fucking tackle that fish into oblivion. Until, until you realize slide tackling actually isn't that effective, it's also kind of a dice roll. Sometimes you'll slide tackle someone and their entire ancestry line will feel it, and other times it's like a counter in Smash Bros, where, you know, you get on the floor and you're flopping like Neymar, and all of a sudden they're up and they're perfectly fine. And when I say shooting is inconsistent, I want to play a little game to show you just how inconsistent it is. You're going to play along at home, and I'm going to show you two different clips. And what I want you to do is to tell me which one of these is going to turn into a goal. Okay, so here is clip A. It is a wide open volley with the goalkeeper still on the ground. And here is clip B with the opponent doing a 360 no scope 
almost at the halfway line with a defender somewhat on him. If you said clip A right away, I know, you've never played footy in a Brazilian favela, so that's embarrassing. It's obviously clip B. So Nelly, what do I do when the computer is being unbearable? What do I do to beat the computer? Well, you find broken mechanics, and you do what all great managers do. You adapt. You play Burnley-style football. Long ball FC, ruthless defending, everything you can to win except actually enjoying the game of football. That's what you do to beat super hard computer. And certainly there is no shortage of broken mechanics you can abuse. When you first start playing this game, you'll start juggling the ball and getting a few skill points here and there. And then you'll realize when you go through your defender once, you generate five times the amount of skill points as you would if you were just juggling by yourself in the corner. However, on super hard difficulty, that becomes quite the endeavor. So the way to cheese around this, if you really want, is to juggle and do skill moves in front of your goalie. Although it can be a bit risky, most of the time what will happen is the ball will go right back into the goalie and sometimes you will keep the points you accumulated, basically giving you endless points, which you can eventually cash in when your meter goes all the way to the right as a free goal. And if you don't even like that level of risk, you can just learn the flick up move and every time he gets close to you, you just flick up the ball and the goalie will pick it up for you. This will in turn force the AI to go back into its own half and then you do this over and over and over again. And if you are being an asshole like I was there, this game teaches us some valuable lessons that you can take to the real world. If your opponent is showboating in his own half, juggling the ball, not passing, feel free to run up right behind him and slide tackle him from behind, hopefully breaking his tibia, because that's what he deserves. You see these two goalies passing back and forth, wasting time? Don't be like them. Drop me a like, let me know what else I can do. I've already done PlayStation 2 era PES, and I'm kind of running out of ideas. Some of you might be hardcore FIFA fans that have never played any FIFA Street in your existence, and that's totally fair. And you might be looking at this game and thinking, well, Nelly, this is great and all, but this just isn't my cup of tea. I'm more of a FIFA guy. Have no fear, my friend. There are many things this game passed on to the FIFA franchise that you might enjoy. Who could forget classic mechanics that were perfectly balanced and fantastic additions to the FIFA franchise, like strife dribbling, or maybe that's not your cup of tea. How about some rebound goals? You're not feeling that? How about some classic glitches where the ball goes through objects? Or maybe you're a simple man and you just want some absolute nonsense goals. Some goals that make zero sense. This game has you covered. Let's see that again. Again, 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 again. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. All right, now that I've triggered your PTSD, let me show you what I've been kind of teasing this entire video. My character that I've built. I've created an almost perfect model, I would say representation of myself, six feet, modest build, and a chin that can cut through watermelons. Let me introduce you to Chinaldinho. I've also given him an Ibra-esque double man bun, which serves no purpose but a 10% bonus for Lukaku's mom. Oh my god, Nelly, that is absolutely unacceptable. I am, I am unsubscribing. That's so, that's, oh, that's over the line, dude. Oh, by the way, this is actually how you defend this game. It's called blocking or some shit. It's actually not that fun. I wouldn't even bother with it. See what I did there? You see what I did? With a little clever editing, I made it seem like I'm not actually getting pumped. But here's what's actually happening in these games. <laughs> 
Four minutes. Four minutes is how long it took the AI to score five goals. Let me ask you a question. You like eating penis? Well, if not, you're gonna have to get used to it because you're gonna eat a lot of it. But through the pain, you will adapt and you will learn. Okay, let's talk about story mode. It's super basic, but that's not a bad thing. It's essentially the Pokemon formula. You go around to different street football dojos, playing against AI and earning rep and SP points for winning. Then you use those points to level up your character or wager them for a chance to win more points. You can also wager these points for a chance to win better teammates, which again, super hard computer, you'll definitely struggle. It took me hours to secure my first 50 rated player, which actually is a massive upgrade considering the starting squad is basically Sunday League players. You can also customize your players with items you win. This is a small but cool feature for a game that was made in 2005. There are eight different dojos to unlock and tournaments to obtain. At first, I'll be honest, I didn't think this game had that much longevity, but I easily put tens of hours into it. And if I may make a cheeky little recommendation here, put on a little Board with Nelly podcast in the background as you play. Wow, these ads are getting out of hand, Nelly. No, but seriously, the John Wick music will eventually become very hard to listen to. I put a lot of time into this game, trying to level up Chinaldino and improve my squad. Having my Chin Mean character alongside world-class players in a street football dojo in Barcelona is quite a spectacle, I must say. It's what I imagine my life will be like when I finally move to Spain. All right, Nelly, roll the montage. These brothers are serious when it comes to football, trust me. And we go to this. What the fuck is this EA? Who made this? Who is responsible for this abomination? See, the difference between these two things is pretty clear. FIFA Street was built on a solid engine FIFA had in 2005, while this was built on the abomination that is the Frostbite engine. In FIFA Street, the ball is glued to your feet. This is what makes the game so fun. While in Volta, it's based on actual physics. Ew, who likes physics? I've said it many times, but I'll say it once again for people that might not know. FIFA Street was a relatively new and creative endeavor, while Volta was built for the sole purpose of appeasing the fanbase after several years of poor games and lacks of innovation. EA didn't actually care if Volta was good or not, it was just a marketing tool. Whereas FIFA Street was its own game, it kind of had to be decent to make money. Finally, to bring it all home, this moment right here, this is it. This moment doesn't only carry this game, but it carries this franchise. The ability to easily string together skills and passes where the ball feels like it's glued to your feet, and to create what in regular football would be one-off spectacles you can do in every single possession of FIFA Street. And I would like 